Uh, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Uh, your name is? Tasneem Vali. I'm the office manager. And uh, office manager of? Uh, I'm the office manager for the Manitoba Islamic Association. Uh, it's the oldest association in Manitoba, about 60 years. In 1969, it was incorporated, and we operate two mosques. One is the oldest mosque in Manitoba on Hazelwood Avenue. Um, it's called the Hazelwood Masjid. And 40, it's going to be 40 years old today. So it is, does it could be a heritage building. That's, and the other one. Not is, today, but this not year. Not today, but this year. Okay. Um, and the other one is the Waverly Grand Mosque, which is a mosque and a community center. Um, and it is the largest mosque in Winnipeg. And that's where we are yes. right now. Um, what does this Grand Mosque mean for all the Muslims? How does it tie into the identity of the Muslims in Winnipeg? Um, so the Grand Mosque is essentially a, not just a mosque, it's a community center. And I think it brings us back reminisce to the time of the Prophet, where the mosque is where everything took place. So this is where the decisions of foreign affairs were taking place at the time of the Prophet وسلم, and if the armies were sent out or if whatever peace mission was sent out, it was happening at the mosque. And this is kind of reminiscent, reminiscent of that, um, which uh, mostly stuff goes on here, where if we're reaching out to other communities, we have open houses uh, where people come in and they're like, oh, we've never been to a mosque and this is, you know, uh, wonderful. We have culture days. We have a huge Eid festival on our property. We have a um, huge property outside. How big is it? I've heard I believe 13? it's 20. I, I think it's, I want to say it, oh yeah, it was 20 acres and the government appropriated some of it. So I think it's about between 13 and 15. I don't know okay. for sure right All right. Now. Um, so yes, it, um, so we have an Eid festival. So July 16th weekend, every year, this is the fifth year, we have a huge Eid festival um, where we have food and we have bouncers and we have hay rides and petting zoos and um, and people come in and um, I think for last year, the year before that, we had we hired buses to bring people from downtown here. Um, so this mosque was built about 10 years ago, 2006, I believe, was when it was completed. And the vision was when it was built, people kept saying, like, why are you building such big mosques? There's no Muslims here. And now July 1st is going to be the last Jummah of Ramadan this year. It's going to be the 27th night, and it is a statutory holiday. We are planning on putting tents outside because we cannot accommodate the people in the masjid. Right. That is how huge, mashallah, our Muslim population has grown. It's swelled. It's a, they were counting about 9,000 Muslims. In the entire city? In Winnipeg, yes. And out of a population of more or less 800,000, something you know like what? this? I don't know what the latest number is. I'm sorry, okay. I have no idea. So that's a number I've yeah, heard. So exactly. you're hovering around 1% of right. the population, sure. which is uh, comparable to uh, the number of Muslims nationally to the national right. population, around yes. 1%. And yeah, and we have like um, a lot of, like if you look at our gym with the ads, you'll see a lot of politicians, they frequent the mosque, they're very familiar with the mosque. Uh, the greater community is very familiar, very comfortable with the mosque, just because we've been reaching out to everybody like even for the festival we'll have neighbors come by mm -hmm. and they'll you know they'll come and do henna and they'll leave and they'll come back for the food and it's just very comfortable for them now just a couple of days ago on sunday june 19th 2016 you held a benefit iftar for the coalition for missing and murdered indigenous women in manitoba yes. and uh that See, I attended it. It seemed very natural and normal, everybody mingling. And for me, from Toronto, it seemed very strange that two communities were very comfortable and it seemed they knew each other already. Um, is that the case here? That Yes. Uh, so we have um, a lot of members in the community, in the Muslim community, work and have close personal relationships like friendships with members of other communities and then we bring that to the masjid to then help each other out. Um, it, when um, this uh, issue was first raised uh, we were you know standing shoulder to shoulder with the um, marches that they had downtown and you know the vigils that they held at the ledge so I, I think we have a very close personal relationship and that then translates into a community relationship. Um, so yes, we did know 
you know, like uh, some of the Muslims are very good friends with Nahani Fontaine, who is the, mm-hmm. um, you know, who was the MLA for St. John um, and who was our keynote speaker. Um, so it, I, I think it helps because you then understand each other better. Um, and since we're not isolated in being Muslims in our own little island, we mm-hmm. need to give to the community that we I always tell people that as a Muslim, I always, my, my mandate, I feel, is to leave the place that I lived in better than I found it. And I think that's what we're working on. And certainly the, the Waverly Grand Mosque, as I've just been uh, learned, is uh, the correct yes, uh, designation <laughs> instead of uh, perhaps the Winnipeg Grand Mosque, uh, which suggests maybe there'll be another Grand Mosque yeah, uh, we'll later on. Um, this building actually has uh, worked in the favor of building that identity. Yes, um, like our gym, which is a community center part of it, um, it's online. Anybody can rent it. So we have a Nepalese group who comes and plays volleyball all the time, every day in the morning. So this in Ramadan, we told them to like cool it because um, just with the logistics of iftar and tarawih. But they come every Saturday and they play volleyball. Here. Um, and we have a basketball league that is looking to come and then do PV basketball here. Uh, which so is not a just a game or two, but an actual <laughs> league, league would be based yeah. from uh, your for facility. For a while we had Girl Guides meeting here. So it's um, the space is rentable to anybody and people do feel comfortable now coming to a mosque. Uh, and, you know, it's not a huge thing for them to do uh, it. Tell us about your open houses. Okay, so our open houses, uh, we try to do two every year so one in november one in march around that time um and the way they're organized is when people come in we give them like a very brief tour of the entire mosque with an islam 101 thrown in kind of thing and then we have refreshments and we have a henna table and we have a calligraphy table and try on a hijab table kind of those things um we have a treasure hunt for kids then they get a loot bag at the end um, so just simple questions as to how many times a day do Muslims pray? So when the kids come, they can just write on their card, and you know, and I can give, I can show you a card, and then, um, and then uh, we have tables with uh, ask me. So because I, I, we found that people in a public setting are afraid to ask the questions that's really on their mind. Um, and then so we have individual people sitting and then the people are, so we'll have a scholar, we'll have a university student, we'll have like, um, you know, f- somebody who's a professional who's reading. So we'll have members of the community who are maybe not scholars, but you know, they can talk about their religion. People feel that I can talk to this person and they will go and they will sit down and ask them questions and we get questions from everything from homosexuality to how we would treat if um, uh, somebody came in here and said, I don't want to be Muslim anymore. Like we get this whole variety of questions. Um, And um, so they feel better that they can ask these questions on a one-on-one setting and people love that format. Um, so in November, when it happened last year, unfortunately, that was the same time as the Paris attacks. I think it was in November. Um, so we had a huge crowd. We had about a thousand people come in. Um, and they were like, the one thing what that I heard. Previously, what was the number you would have expected if it was there was no other 300, events? Okay. Maybe 200. But yeah. So two to four, four times, times the number right. of people. And the one thing that resonated that we heard all the time was like, we didn't realize how similar we are, or we didn't realize how similar our beliefs are. Um, That was the one thing that resonated over and over and again. And people who came to the open house were at the Aboriginal dinner. Were They keep coming to our dinners. We have something called Foodoramas here. And where it is, the Foodorama is every month, we have a community who comes and cooks together. And then we sell tickets for $20. The tickets come to fundraise for the masjid. And people come together and enjoy ethnic food. And you can see it on our Facebook page if you go down the timeline. Um, And they come to the Foodoramas. So it's um, they're regular visitors to the masjid, more than I think Muslims come to the masjid. (laughs) Um, They come every month, you know. Um, We have tours, like students. um, We have school districts that have sent their entire staff of 150 to come here and get a tour, listen to the Jummah sermon. So people are very comfortable. And I think it's once they realize how similar we are. That's 
That's a lot of programming yeah. uh, for a building that has already shown that it's too small for the community. It's totally small. Um, you have the land. Uh, what might be the aspirations to make use of that land? I don't know. They're planning right now. Planning so, right now. yeah. Um, um, what is the vision of the executive committee, the makeup of your executive committee? Um, so our executive committee is an all-volunteer committee, uh, and then they're voted in for three years, for a three-year term. So right now, um, our executive committee, for the first time, I think, is seven member. It has two women. Um, uh, two of the people from on the executive committee went to high school here, right? Um, and I think that makes a difference where you have a younger, like 40-ish uh, executive committee and then they're now looking beyond the baggage that we bring from our let's say uh, cultures that we were brought up in um, and looking to actually become become part of the larger community here to have a voice um, because unless you have a voice you can't make things better for yourself so this year we actually sent out a uh, one page um, uh, uh, one page informing uh, schools about Ramadan and we got such a positive response because they all handed them out on their staff meetings saying you know if a student is uh, fasting these are the signs you want to look for mm -hmm. maybe not have excuse them from gym you know just things like that uh, and then the schools were like you know we never knew and so I, I think taking those steps to reach out um, is a wonderful vision um, and like my son kids and I that's that's what I say I say you know it's um, you don't have to have pakore for iftari it's okay to have poutine you know it's not haram it's so, okay to have yeah. poutine for iftar. iftar yes it's okay to have poutine for iftar no pakore that's fine, that's fine. Uh, Tasneem Vali the office manager of the Waverly Grand Mosque yes. I uh, thank you very much for your time uh, today with uh, 30 Masjids, 30masjids.ca. I uh, wish you Ramadan Mubarak, and uh, maybe I believe we need to find our way back here yes. for your Eid festival. You should, you should come here. It's, it's a wonderful, wonderful. We, have, we end up with fireworks, it's excellent. Fireworks. Well, yes. uh, I'm almost sold at fireworks and yes. poutine for iftar. You can't yes. beat that. It's wonderful. Thank so, you. Thank As you. Assalamu alaikum.